Hey, welcome back. So we left off with the oil lines and we're gonna be moving right along. Off camera, I swapped out some more of the Chrome hardware, so you might see some of that on here. And we're getting ready to start the wiring project, which uh, can be a little bit intimidating for some of you if you've never done this before, but I'm gonna try to make it as easy as possible. It's something you don't want. <laughs> Welcome to another edition of Saturday Sportster. But before we get to running the wires, we gotta finish mounting some of the stuff that we're gonna to need to run wires to. The generator, I also have some circuit breakers that we're going to put on the bike. So before we bolt the generator on, I wanna show you a couple things that I would inspect just to make sure that this thing is working properly when you go to bolt it on. So let's do that now. So this is the generator we're gonna be running, and there's a couple things that you're gonna to wanna to inspect before you bolt this on. For starters, one's going to be your mounting holes. I actually had a stripped out hole on this part of the housing, and I had to put a Healy coil in it. And then also, you're gonna to want to inspect your armature. And since we're gonna be running one of the cycloelectric voltage regulator end caps, this is a good time to take the cap off, inspect the armature, and install the cycloelectric voltage regulator. So the first thing you're gonna do is just pop off the cap. It's just held on by these two studs that go all the way through the generator housing. And underneath are going to be your two brushes and your armature. Okay, so here's our brushes, and this is the armature that the brushes ride on. And as you can see, this one doesn't look too bad, but some of them can be really dirty. This black from the brushes actually rubbing on the copper. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the brushes out of the way and we're gonna actually clean that up. So to be able to properly clean this armature off to get this nice and shiny and a nice clean surface for the brushes to ride on, I'm gonna take these studs out so I can easily get this out of the way without unhooking anything and that so when I'm cleaning this off I'm not gonna embed the brushes with a bunch of sanding dust and stuff like that and be able to wipe this off clean just so I have a clean surface afterwards for the brushes to ride on when it goes back together and if you just pop the studs out it's real easy this plate will pop off and you'll be able to just hang that out of the way I'm just gonna tap these out real easy and those those are gonna pop right out and we're actually, the brushes are gonna push out as you, you can actually kinda, they're spring loaded. So you might wanna just kinda grab them and you'll be able to lift that out of the way. And there's a pin for it to ride on. So you'll, it'll have to snap in in the same spot. And we're gonna actually just set this down on the table, just like that. And it's sitting on the two studs. And this'll make it really easy so I can just rotate it over and you see already that the armature is cleaning up. This is a, this is a fine 220 grit, anything you want to use the finest grit that you have. Typically I wouldn't use, I wouldn't go below a hundred. Definitely not. And you're just, you're just cleaning it off just so there's a good connection between your armature and your brushes because this is what charges your bike. Sometimes you'll see if your bike's not charging, all you gotta do is take this off and clean this armature up and your bike will charge just fine because your, your armature will get dirty from the brushes wearing on this part for quite some time if you've got a lot of miles on your bike. So that looks pretty good. We're just gonna put it back together. That was all I really needed to do. It, this one really wasn't that dirty compared to others that I've seen.
And so now we're just putting the studs back. You kind of have to clock them because there's a hex in the housing that the head of the bolt fits into. And so once I kind of get that started, I'll take my hammer and just kind of tap it in just to hold it. And now it's, it's gonna, no, it's not seated in there yet. Let me flip this around so I can see. So as you can see, I got the hex just kind of barely started because the nut's gonna actually pull it in the rest of the way, but this will keep it from falling out. So I just lightly seated that in there. So when I slip the, the voltage regulator end cap in, it'll draw everything together nicely and I won't have to fiddle with these studs anymore. Like I said before, we're gonna run one of these voltage regulators from Cycle Electric. And this is a great part to use on the end of your generator because then you don't have to run a separate voltage regulator somewhere else on your bike. It's a nice clean look and the wires are already connected so your wires will be nice and short. It's just a nice part for eliminating a lot of things on your bike and just making it simpler. So since the Sportster is kick only and we're running the smaller battery, we're going to be using the lower voltage output model of the cycloelectric voltage regulator, which that being the main difference as far as how much volt it's actually putting into your battery to charge it. And since we're having the smaller battery, that's the one you're gonna to wanna to run with. But there's a couple other different ones, but just make sure that it's the right one for your bike versus 12 volt versus six volt, and then high voltage output versus low voltage output. And there's a lot of good information in the description to help you pick the right one for your motorcycle. But they're really easy to bolt on. There's one thing that you might wanna look out for. There's this little area, and that actually snaps in over the pin that you see. And then there's the needle bearings, and that rides on the shaft, and you just gotta line up the two bolts. And that's really all there is to it. But just make sure when you're slipping that over, you're lining up your studs, but you also wanna put that notch in clearance to the pin. Is my shaft already in there? No. Because my studs are coming out. There we go, there we go. Okay. So now I got the cap on and I'm just going to slip the nuts in the place and it's gonna draw everything together. And I just need to be careful. I wanna make sure that the studs seat all the way and so they're not standing proud off of this surface. So when I bolt it to the motor, it's not gonna gouge up my case. You just wanna make sure everything's seated. To get into there, I'll use this nut as a spacer so I could reach in there and keep that nut at the end of the socket. Okay, now we're gonna snug them up. You can probably do this by hand because I wanna see it. As you see, it's pulling into the housing now. And you'll definitely feel it snug up. But see how it's just under the surface? And this one's proud. You wanna make sure that these are seated all the way before you bolt this on. go. This is the cover for that. We're just going to slip that into place and we're kind of going to keep it loose so we can make sure to tighten it up in a spot that's easy for us to get to. Say if you have charging issues down the road, you might want to put it in an easily accessible location just so you can move this out of the way and check your armature to make sure that it's not super dirty and uh, restricting your system from charging properly. So. We'll just leave that loose for now. And we're gonna get this thing bolted up. So when you install this, you're gonna to wanna to put your terminals on the top so it's easy to wire up and access and get to. So we're gonna line up this threaded hole with that hole in the case. So that's the orientation that you want your generator to sit when you have it mounted. So don't, don't put it backwards and upside down because it'll make it tricky to tricky to get to. I usually put them just straight up and down. So we're gonna have to put in a gasket on the generator and this can be kind of tricky because there's two holes and uh, it's 
it's kind of heavy and hard to deal with and you got to throw the bolts in from the other side and the last thing you want is your gasket to rotate and block one of your holes off or well it would be blocking both of the holes off so what i do is i just dab a little bit of grease on here and stick it on the part preferably at the top and it'll just keep this from rotating as you're trying to fit everything together so i would just touch just a little bit and since this is the top I'm just going to just make this surface a little sticky just so it doesn't so it isn't going to rotate on you. And then you line up your holes. Push that down and that's all you need to do. The other tricky part is when we fit this together, we also need to fish this edge of the washer to the other side of the idler gear that you see inside here. So this can all be really tricky. So adding that little bit of a grease just to keep things from rotating really helps out. So now we're gonna fit this together and clearly gotta be really mindful not to nick your paint at all. So you're gonna wanna get this into place and you gotta lift up to sneak it around the idler gear and then to drop it back down. And we got the first hole lined up. Sneak this other one in and I'm gonna come around to the other side and tighten this up. So now that we've got the generator bolted up, the next thing I want to work on fitting to this motorcycle before we start running the wires is mounting the circuit breakers. To mount the circuit breakers, I'm using these Hawthorne Cycles circuit breaker mounts. They're really cool 3D printed little snap-in circuit breaker boys. And I figured a good place that we can mount these is going to be on the back side of this oil tank on the plate that's provided to mount it so that when we run the wires, we can run straight up the seat tubes and then connect to the circuit breakers and then into the backbone. I think it'll be a perfect spot. So like I said, we're using these Hawthorne Cycles circuit breaker mounts. This is the dual that's going to fit my ignition and accessories. And then we have another one that's going to come maybe here. Maybe I like them vertically. No, I liked it like this. I think that looked cooler. Okay, so we got the main from the battery and then we're gonna do ignition and lights on this one over here, just to separate it. We're gonna run two breakers, one for your ignition, one for your lights, so that, say if you're, you get a short somewhere and it's in your, your uh, lights or accessories, it's not gonna keep you from getting home. So we're gonna separate those two circuits. Just removing the plate, we're gonna drill some holes and countersink for the bolts. And we're using countersunk bolts, like flatheads, so that when we bolt this up, it's not gonna gouge into the tubes because we don't have a lot of area to, since there's two C tubes, we gotta make sure it sits flat around them. So we're using some countersinks. It's also steel, so I gotta get some paint on it. You could also chrome it, but since it's in the back and we're just, I'm just going to paint this black. So we're going to mount our circuit breakers on this. As you can see, I have the plate actually flipped over because I want to do my layout on this side because I also have to put the countersinks in. So I don't want to drill from one side and have to flip it over. I'm going to lay this out and you can honestly probably lay this on here and mark your holes just with a Sharpie and then drill them and bolt them up and that'll be fine. I do want to show you another way of how to lay out your holes so that when you actually take the time and drill it nicely, you'll be able to be confident that this thing's gonna bolt up super nice. First off, you just gotta measure what your center to center is. And since it's a through hole, it's hard to actually line up inside the hole and actually find the center right. And then you're just eyeballing to the other side. So if you don't know this trick, it's really easy to just find a hard edge on one side. See, I'm, I'm measuring where the brass meets the plastic. I'm measuring from there 
lining that up really nice. And then I measure just to the same side on the other end. And so that looks pretty dead on to two inches to me since it's a four, I'm gonna switch it around. So, so that looks dead on to two inches. So I'm gonna make that, and that's the same, that's the same measurement as if you were from this edge to that edge, to the center of the part, to the center of the part. And this doesn't just work with these holes, this will work with framing your house, pretty much any kind of layout from center to center. Same edge to same part of the edge on any part will give you the dimensions as if it was center to center, as long as they're equal diameter or equal width parts that you're doing that with. And then, so this one's two inches, and then I think I measure, already measured this one, it was a little bit more complicated. Yeah, see, it's not quite two and a half. There we go. I would say that's, that looks like two and nine sixteenths, but I'm gonna show you a different trick. So if you had your calipers handy, you could actually, you can measure this way. And I'm wiggling it just to make sure that they're, uh, that the edges of the calipers are actually totally seated in that hole. So what we're getting is 2.39, 2.39. And then, so we're gonna actually mark that down, 2.39. We'll save that and then find the diameter of the hole we were just measuring and that's one six and then so since we were measuring on the inside inside of the hole to the inside of the hole and the hole is 0.16 in diameter we need to add 2.39 we're going to add 0.16 to 2.39 because there's half of the hole to the center of the left hole and then there's half to the other side. So this plus a full hole will equal what this is overall. So it's 2.55, which makes perfect sense because it, it did look to be just under two and nine sixteenths, which would be 2.5625. So that'll give, that gave us our center to center on that. And now we know both center to centers and we can line this thing up. Like I said before, this might be a little bit overkill for laying out a couple circuit breakers, but this is a method that I use for doing any type of layout on stuff I want to, want to fit nice. So you can use Dicom. I'll, I often just grab Sharpies because they're cheap and they do the, basically the same thing. So we'll lay that out. We're gonna have to let it dry a little bit. <laughs> First let's sign the center of this part because this one's actually the single Circuit breaker mount is gonna be in the center. So this part's measuring just under five. It's a four nine, 4.987. And I know this isn't, this is just always how I do stuff. Out of two, so we'll scratch that. Two, four, nine, three, five. So that's the center. And this was two inches center to center. And I want to put that, do the first hole. So, I'll do the first hole three eighths. Let's see, three eighths off of that. So I'll do three eighths off of this edge, and then I'll do two and three eighths off of this edge. And then there'll be two inches center to center for the single circuit breaker mount. And I'll scribe that line. So I'm using my calipers as a scribe. I might get some shit about that, but eh, it's part of the game. So there's three ace right there. And then we're gonna go two and three ace. All right. So those are gonna be my two holes for the single, the single circuit breaker. Those are gonna sit just like that, and I'm gonna drill those through for my 1024 bolt, and I'm gonna countersink it so that the head sits flush and isn't going to uh, gouge my seat tubes when this thing's bolted up. So those, that's that one, and now I have to figure out how far I want this to actually go in. And let me do my scale. I'll go, I think an inch is okay. All right, so I'll scribe an inch. My bottom jaw sometimes scrubs nicer. 
There we go. Okay, and I got a nice scribe line. So we measured this to be 4.987, and then we measured the center to be 2.55 from center to center on the dual mount. So all we need to do is 4.987 minus 2.55, and then we divide that by two, and that tells us that tells us how how far in from either edge this is to give us the center of 255. So 1.2185 is our measurement. There we go. And so I'll do one side that way. And then I actually add 1.2185 plus 2.55. And that's so I'm working off the same edge and I don't go off of the other edge. So I'm always measuring off of the same edge because then you're gonna compound your error and uh, get into problems that way. It keeps things more accurate if you're always working off of the same place. So I'm gonna set my calipers to three, seven, six, eight, five. And oh, I don't wanna flip this around, so I scribed off of this edge before, so I'm scribing off of this edge again. And now I have my four holes lined up always working off of square edges. And so after I drill this and mount it up, you can even, now that you have your holes scribed, you can even hang it over and just make sure that everything's going to fit up nice and it's not touching and you have just nice center points to work off of. This would be a great way to lay this out, say if you don't have a bridge port and you're gonna be drilling it by hand, the more accurately that you do your layout like this, the easier it'll be for you to drill and you have nice scribe lines like this you'll be able to see if your drill's walking because the center lines won't match up when your drill walks over. So you'll be able to maybe correct that on the fly instead of finishing your part and uh, bolting it on and it doesn't fit anymore. So you'll be able to maybe like step up and correct that as you go instead of finding out later that it, you messed this up. So do proper layouts, it just makes things easier in the future. So, but since I have a bridge port, I'm gonna put this on the bridge port and I'm gonna drill my holes and I'm gonna do my countersinks. Okay, so I'm lining up my first hole and I'm eyeballing it with a my center drill. And the first one's the only one I really need to eyeball because I'm gonna be able to measure to the other hole to give me that proper two inch offset from center to center. But first thing I'm gonna do So this has a, a Z stop on the spindle. I'm actually going to bottom out this countersink into the chuck so that I can set the Z stop. So anytime I take this in and out, I'll be able to feed to the same spot so I don't have to keep measuring how deep to countersink this. So I got my countersink bolt handy and I'm going to countersink this and I just want it to be flush or just under flush. Since I have this on my bridge port and I remember the dimension that I'm gonna use from center to center, I'm actually just going to zero my machine. Lock the table and I zero this out and make sure, okay, I'm at that side of the backlash. And I'm gonna go 
two inches. Let's see what that looks like. That should line me right up with my mark. And that lines me pretty dead nuts right up to that. Okay, so now we're gonna do the same thing. So I eyeballed the first mark, and now that I have that drilled into it, I'm going to move the table the 2.550 thousandths to actually line up the center to center for the dual circuit breaker mount. And I can accurately do that with the table instead of just like eyeballing it off the mark. The first hole doesn't matter because it just needs to be center to center off of the one. So you just have to have like a starting point. And as long as that you're close to the other one, it'll be okay. This one makes sure that it's going to bolt on properly. My, my DRO is slightly inaccurate, so I actually go off the dials on the table instead of relying on those. So now that I got the holes in for the circuit breaker mounts, I deburred everything and I just wanted to give this one last test fit just to make sure everything fits properly before I get some paint on it. Just dry run, bolt this up. We got all the bolts under, under flush, so that looks good. And I'm going to just kind of set this in place and just make sure that I don't want to make any changes before it gets painted. But I think this looks pretty good. I think this is going to work perfect. So I got the bracket painted and the circuit breaker mounts bolted up. And I'm really excited how this came out. And I think this will almost disappear on the back side of the oil tank. This plate for the gas box oil tank really was a great place to mount your circuit breakers and be able to run wires to it. And I think this will be a really clean look on the back of the oil tank with these parts. So I'm gonna bolt this on and we're gonna actually get to start running some wires on this thing. Ba 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 ba